Hi everybody, uh, welcome to In Air's Kitchen. Uh, doing another episode live today, this is Thursday, and this um, episode is being filmed by Blue because Brooke has some other things to do. So um, thank you Blue for stepping in as a cameraman. We're gonna do veggie burgers today, and um, veggie burgers is something that uh, I think are awful most of the time, almost all the time. I, I, I've had so many different veggie burgers over the years, and I've eaten every veggie burger, and I rarely like them. Uh, a lot of times they're like a dry black bean burger is just the worst. Um, sometimes they're just really uh, mushy. Um, I, I think that when we think, when I think of food I really love, I think of things that like, I can't wait to have another bite, and I just want to keep eating it, I don't want to stop. And veggie burgers almost never feel that way to me. Um, yeah, but I, I've, I've always thought that they should be able to work. You should be able to pull off a veggie burger that's yummy. And so I worked for a lot of years trying to play around with different mixes and recipes. And I've ended up with three different veggie burgers I make at home. And this show is going to be a little different. This is like a little more advanced than some of the other episodes we've done. In that I don't have like a specific recipe for you to follow. Instead, we'll be talking to you about an approach. And uh, hopefully that the, at this point, if you've watched all the previous episodes, you should be ready for this. But if you're jumping in for the first time, this, uh, this is like definitely needs a caution sticker. This is more advanced show. Um, the, uh, I have three different types of veggie burgers I make at home. Uh, I'll make veggie burgers that are um, based on tofu and cheese and breadcrumbs or crackers. And that's something that it's like a variant of a recipe my dad used a lot when I was a kid. He'd make like a meatloaf, but um, that's how he made it out of tofu. And um, I, I uh, I've sort of adjusted that, and that's the, that's actually the base that I'm going to do today. We'll have another episode in the future where we do one that's like based on grains. So sometimes I'll do like a quinoa burger, or I'll do something with rice. So in the future we'll do another episode with a different kind of burger. And then the third type I'll do is a uh, bean-based burger. And so those are really like the three types of burgers I'll build. And for us, veggie burgers are usually something that we do on Sundays because I clean out the refrigerators I'm starting the next week. So it's like a really good vehicle for um, leftovers. And so we're gonna dive into the refrigerator today, grab some ingredients and figure out what we're gonna make this out of. Um, if you want to follow along at home, this is a very flexible recipe. So you can do a lot of different kinds of substitutions. You don't have to have the exact things that I'm going to be using today. But these are the blocks that I think of. So one, we have some tofu. So we have a brick of tofu and some cheese. Today we're going to use cheddar cheese because I love cheddar cheese. And then my dad would use crackers. Um, if you want to make something really rich, he's like Ritz crackers. Sometimes he use saltines. Uh, Breadcrumbs also work. I don't have any crackers right now, but I do have some whole bread, so we're going to use breadcrumbs. So these are the base for this type of burger. And like I said, there's another type I make which is like a bean base, and there's another type I make which is a grain base. But today we're going to start out with this one. Um, we're going to use egg and flour as extra binder, and I'll talk a little bit about how that works. This particular burger, um, the cheese and the breadcrumbs uh, do a pretty good job binding the burger as it is, but we'll probably just get a little bit more um, uh, firmness in there with the egg and the flour. Um, vegetables, we'll use a bunch of vegetables. We'll see what we have in the refrigerator, um, but I always try to get uh, a lot of veggies into the veggie burger. I think that's the way it should be. Um, I think usually by volume uh, or weight, we're pr I'm probably getting up to about half of it, maybe a little bit more uh, is the vegetables. And then we're going to use some spices and herbs, and you can have a lot of fun with that, but you can go a different direction. So you could do like a, uh, you could do a veggie burger that has um, uh, Tex-Mex flavors in it. Um, you could do a veggie burger that has um, Indian flavors in it, like a garam masala or something like that. Uh, there's a lot of different directions you can go, and, uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about choices to make there. But this is the basic structure that we're going to, um, that we're going to do today. Um, and I'm hoping I get a helper. Is Violet, Violet going to be able to help me? Yeah. Okay, well, I think she's having her hair done. Um, but hopefully Violet will be here to help very soon. So, um, the other thing I should add here is um, putting the burger together. Um, sauce, cheese, tomato, 
uh, other fixings, lettuce. Um, one of the things that I really love on a burger is uh, grilled onions. And so that's actually, I'm just going to walk you guys through the way I'd be making the burgers at home. And we're going to be having these for dinner at our house, so I'm, we're going to make them the way we like them. We're going to start off grilling the onions because those like to go nice and slow and long. So we'll get those started right now. And sometimes uh, you can grill the onions, uh, you can pick what shape you want. So sometimes you can do them like rings, and sometimes you can do them like, uh, uh, like um, uh, I don't know, half, half moons. And then other times you can do onions diced. And I tend to prefer the diced onion uh, on burgers. Uh, do you like that way too? You're not sure? Yeah, I'm not right. sure. And uh, you may notice, like, when I was mentioning the different burger bases, none of them have mushrooms in them and nuts. And those are things that I will use in burgers, but um, they usually won't be the base. So sometimes I'll bring mushrooms into any, any of those different bases. Um, today we're not going to put mushrooms in here, which Violet, Violet's probably uh, thankful for. Um, Violet's still learning how to like old mushrooms. Uh, but this, this uh, recipe today is not going to use mushrooms. Uh, uh, so I'm just getting a little bowl out to use as compost. Uh, this, this approach of like using the veggie burgers, using the veggie burgers to use up leftovers, It's a really nice way to reduce any waste in your kitchen. And um, there's, uh, I've made veggie burgers with kimchi. I've made veggie burgers with um, uh, all sorts of different things that I find in the refrigerator. Um, leftover taco ingredients, roasted vegetables. And you can go a lot of different directions and they can be really delicious and a really good way, like I said, to make sure you're not wasting those things. I have a griddle here. And um, I'm going to provide a link to the place I got this griddle from. I absolutely love it. We haven't gotten into doing pita bread yet, but we will. And I, to do pita bread, we need a heavy um, uh, like baking stone, and I didn't have one. So uh, before, when I was just getting the show started, um, I remembered that I, I met uh, this guy who started this company called Baking Steel. This is a local company. And so you can go online and find Baking Steel. And this side of it is like uh, a pizza stone, except it's made out of steel, and it works really, really well. But what's super cool about this is that the other side is a griddle. And so not all of his stones are this way. Uh, most of the steels are this way. Most of the pizza steels are not griddles. If you go on his website, you can look at the griddles. And this is the one that's called Nero or something like that. Um, I, I got this, and I seasoned it a few times, and I'm just absolutely in love with it. Um, and it's funny, I haven't even used the oven aspect of it that much. I've like mostly been using it as a griddle, but it's the best griddle I've ever worked with. It's awesome. It makes me feel like a uh, short order cook. And I'm realizing that a lot of those effects that you see in diners and stuff, like the way an egg cooks, the way the onions cook, um, has to do, they probably are using this kind of thick steel, which we don't usually cook with at home. Uh, but it's absolutely awesome. It works really well. We'll be making the burgers on this later as well. Um, that's another uh, point I should make about burgers. Um, veggie burgers are not for the grill. Um, it's, uh, they, they fall apart. They need a, a flat top, a griddle. And you know, that's where most burgers got started. And I think still a lot of people making beef burgers really prefer to use a griddle. Um, but they're really, they're really better for a griddle. If you need to grill them, you can make them first on the griddle and then bring them out and heat them up on the grill. But I, I, uh, this isn't a recipe for the grill. Um, the other thing I will mention is like, this isn't a recipe where I'm trying to create something that you will think is a beef burger. I, I don't know any veggie burgers except for like some of the more modern fake meat uh, that, that even gets close to that. But if you really want a beef burger, but you don't want to eat the beef, Go grab Impossible, go grab Beyond. Uh, I think those are really your best bets. And, um, and of those two, probably Impossible is the one that might really fool you and think you have beef. Um, 
But this isn't that at all. I mean, really what this is, is like, it's a croquette, uh, or it's a patty, there's different kinds of terms for it, but it's gonna be really flavorful and really yummy, and we're gonna eat it in a burger bun, assembled as a burger. It's just, we're not trying to chase um, a beef burger and try to recreate that exactly. Um, all right, so we've got the onion going here on the, on the griddle, and hopefully that will caramelize. And you're ready to help me, huh, Violet? Yeah. Awesome. All right, let's go to the refrigerator and see what we've got, and figure out what we want to make. You can have an input on this, because I, uh, I really haven't figured out what we're going to make this out of, so this is going to be fun. So we've got some chili in there, and so you can, uh, yeah, you can get so you can see a full view. So we have some chili in here, so if I was doing a bean-based uh, burger, that might be a really good choice. Um, you know what I see here, Violet, is there's, um, uh, there's some cauliflower soup, but it's not a very big portion. So that could be yummy, like a cauliflower burger. And actually, this is funny, as I look in here, you can see here, these are burgers. Something else I'll talk a little bit about. These are great to make excess, and we'll often put them in the fridge or freeze them. They're really yummy snacks. They're really uh, delicious quick meal later. And um, this is because today's Thursday. We usually don't make veggie burgers on Thursday, but we usually make them on Sundays. These are probably left over from Sunday. Um, I can't remember what was in that one, but it was something yummy. Yes, we need tofu. Thank you, Violet. And we need cheddar cheese. Awesome. Now you can use some other cheeses if you want. I think we're going to stick with cheddar today. Um, Violet, do you like the idea of cauliflower? Sure. Or, do you, or not? I like it. Yeah? You tell me. Um, we're probably going to want some lettuce on top of the burger when we get there. Um, let's see. What else do we want to use? Um, you know what? We have some old beets here. Um, I wonder if, uh, or maybe, I got an idea. I think there's some pickled beets somewhere. Do you think that we do? Oh, yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Let's use some pickled beets. That'll be fun. So we'll use these. Um, I think that'll be good. So we've got some cauliflower. We have some pickled beets. Are we going to put the pickled beet in, in the burger? This might be yummy on the burgers. What do you think? Bean yeah. sprouts. Um, the pickled beets. I was thinking we put them in the burger, Violet. Ah, Does that sound I think, good? Yeah, that would be fun. Um, cool. I think that that's probably pretty good. Uh, let me pull a little bit of this. Um, this is a show you pickled daikon. So this is a soy sauce with daikons in it. We talked about this in one of the early episodes. And uh, once you do this, the soy sauce becomes really flavorful. So we're probably going to use that to um, boost the flavor of the uh, of the burger toward the end. Um, I think that's probably pretty good for right now. It's probably a little hard to see, huh? All right, sorry, it's a little bit cramped. Um, you know, I think I think that's probably good for now. Do you have anything else you'd like to request, Violet? Um, Let's have some pickles on our burgers once we get them done. Um, yeah. I think that's probably pretty yummy. Um, all right, awesome. Another benefit of approaching the burgers this way, obviously you can use up some leftovers in the fridge, but you can then um, adjust this burger to whatever time of year it is. So if we were trying to make a burger that was like the exact same recipe every time, uh, we wouldn't be using uh, the ingredients we have right now, but instead we're gonna make use of the things that make sense for this time of year, which is really fun. And if we make these burgers different times of year, the burgers will make them differently we'll have different things uh, accessible, available to us. Um, all right, awesome. Now, I'm gonna wanna grab some nuts, if we have them. Um, I've got some pumpkin seeds, Violet. That, you think that would taste good with cauliflower? Yeah. Or I've got sunflower seeds. What do you think? Um, or I have, um, I have, I think I have in the freezer some, um, uh, some nuts as well. But I think these might be good. Pumpkin seeds? Yeah. Or do you like sunflower seeds? I think we're pumpkin seeds. Think pumpkin seeds? All right. We'll use a little bit of pumpkin seeds then. And, um, all right, so we've got here some different vegetables that we're going to bring in. Uh, we have our tofu, our cheese, we have pumpkin seeds. The thing we're missing is bread crumbs or crackers. And like I said before, I didn't have any crackers, so I took some um, stale bread, and, uh, and what we're going to do is just whiz that up in the food processor. So this will be one of the first things we do. Bye, you want to come over here and help? Sure. So 
someone was asking a question about the cheese. Awesome. Um, yes, uh, meltier cheese is better because what, the role it's going to play here uh, mechanically is it's going to like help hold things together. And so we want a cheese that's going to melt. Um, so, but you could use any kind of cheese that melts. If you use a cheese that doesn't melt, that's okay too. You might just have to use a little more egg as a binder. Um, all right, so I'm just breaking up some of these um, dried out uh, stale pieces of bread. There we go. And um, thank you, Violet. And then we're going to take this in here and we're going to whirl the pulp. Alright, that is a loud, nasty noise, huh? There, a couple more times. So if you had crackers, you could crush up the crackers, that would work fine too. And what we have now is we have some bread crumbs from that stale bread. And, um, and what I usually do when I'm making these, is I get a bowl out, a big bowl, and we'll just start uh, putting these ingredients into the bowl. So, this will be the first, first thing we put in there. Next up, uh, let's get some uh, tofu draining, Violet. Does that sound good? So, what we need to do is cut that. Um, do you want to try and do it? Sure. So, we need to cut that with a sh knife sharp enough to cut. So, here, I want to cut it with this. And what I use to do, and I'll just go around the edge of that. Do you want to do that? Sure. So, we're cutting the tofu package. Tofu is usually packed in a sort of watery liquid, and when you cut it, the liquid goes everywhere. So I'm putting it in the sink to do that, so that it's not getting all messy everywhere. And um, nice job, Violet. And what we did is just cut around the edge of the package, and um, and now inside of this we have this brick of tofu. And so this is this is ready to go. It's going to have water inside of it still. So you can sort of see that as I'm squeezing at it. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to squeeze as much of the water out of it as we can. So something that I find uh, works pretty well for that. Uh, but your hand, you want to uh, wash your hands with soap? Sure. Awesome. So I'll just grab this in my hand and I'll squeeze. And you can see all that tofu water coming out of that. Uh, there are other ways to do this. You can put it under a plate or something and let it sit for a while. Uh, but basically, we just want to dry that out a bit. Now, tofu is um, tofu is uh, soybean curd, so it's sort of like a fresh cheese made out of soybeans. Um, and so we're just going to crumble that in there like that. And I'm going to do this again with another piece. And um, yep, yeah, go ahead and grab that. Yeah, go ahead and break the chunk and try to squeeze as much of that water out as you can. Now, um, it's okay, you know, it doesn't matter if you don't get all the water out. We will adjust at the end to make sure the texture of the tofu burger is where we want it to be. But, um, but do what you can before you put it in. And like I said, if you want to take a more passive approach, you can put this on a plate. Or you put something heavy on top of it and let it just sit there and drain. Sometimes I'll just puncture that package and then flip it upside down and leave it in the sink that way and it'll just uh, slowly drain into the sink. Okay, so looks good, bye. Bring it on over here and so we just kind of crumble it in there. So now we've got the breadcrumbs in there, we've got the tofu in there. Get to um, get to make some veggie burgers for Memorial Day weekend. Um, how's that looking, by? So I'm just uh, taking a peek at my onion, and it's starting to get hot back here, which is great. I'm going to turn down the heat a little bit, adding some more oil, and what I want is I want these to just be cooking really slowly. I want to get to that place where there's a lot of caramelization of the sugars. Um, and uh, they get very soft, they almost melt. All right. So we're just going to let those sit there, and I turn that temperature way down. 
Um, when you're using uh, um, this baking steel, or if you're using um, cast iron, you want to use a metal um, uh, utensil. You don't want to use um, uh, like a nylon or non-stick utensil. And that's because as you rub this over that surface, you actually will uh, smooth out that surface over time and make it more and more non-stick and make it work really well. Um, this, this is seasoned in the same way I would season cast iron. Okay, so let's get back to the mix here. Should we do cheese? Um, so I just cut this uh, package of cheese in half. We got two pieces of cheese here, and I'm going to use the grater here, or Violet can help me. We're going to use the grater attachment on the food processor since we already have it out. So come over here, little girl. There you go. Hit that on button. There you go. Bingo. Perfect. Now I get the off button. Good job. I didn't know we have this. You didn't know we have this? We don't use it that often. I use it when I make veggie burgers. <laughs> We use it for a few other things. So now we have our grated cheese, and we're going to go ahead and dump that in there. And then I thought we could use this grater, Violet, for a few other things before we put this away. So I thought we could use this grater to grate up our um, pickled vegetables. So what do you think of that idea? So we have, um, what do we have here? This one, that looks like pickled, it looks like maybe pickled radishes. Let's put those in there, okay? And then um, this one is, looks like pickled beets. Maybe this one pickled beets too? You think we should get away all the sauce? You know, you want to save some of that? Yeah. Yeah, okay, you can save some of that. It's really like crazy. It looks like a all bloody, doesn't it? Yeah. All right. <laughs> beets. Um, all right, let's do, you want to do some more? This one will save some of the pickle juice you want. Uh, let's take, yeah, you're right. You can use, you can use that brine a few times. Or we can put other beets back in there, huh? Let's see. Uh, maybe a couple more. Yeah. You know, I think in this case, Violet, let's use them all. Let's use all these beets. Oh. Now you're sad about my pickle brine, but... I don't have any more pickles to put in them today. We'll make up some new brine when we put in some new pickles, okay? And this way, we are using up some of those jars that were in our fridge, right? Yeah. Making room for new things. Okay, so we put all those pickles in here. Um, I think we had some pickled onions, some pickled radishes, and a lot of pickled beets. Wanna do it? There you go. And I'm just using the food processor to speed that up, but you could do that by hand um, with, a, with a hand grater uh, as an alternative. So we have our beets here now. And add that in. All right, and now uh, let's add in, we're gonna use our food processor again. Um, I have the uh, uh, pumpkin seeds. I'm gonna drop those in there, and then what I'm gonna do with the pumpkin seeds is um, just to uh, to make them blend a little bit better. I'm gonna add some of the mix in with those. Okay, so I'm it's about a half of the mix right now that I'm adding into the food processor, and we're gonna come over here and. If I did that without anything in there, uh, it would just affect the texture. But this is going to get um, this is going to get me closer to the texture I want to get to. All right, now there we go. Oh, it looks like an actual. It's like all combined. Yeah. So we we uh, so you can see now here about half of it we ran through the food processor. The other half is still hold behind that. We have all the beets in there. Um, and now, uh, we're going to add this cauliflower. This is just a cauliflower soup, 
And it's not a lot of soup. I, I wouldn't do this if it was a ton of soup, but it's just pureed cauliflower. Um, and we'll add that in there. Now you want to make sure, it might look like I'm doing this a little haphazardly, but we are trying to think about what these ingredients taste like together. And you wouldn't want to add things in there that are going to taste bad with one another. So you do want to keep that in mind. But we're, we're going to add in vegetables that we think complement one another. I think that beets and cauliflowers taste fine together. Um, I, but I would be careful a little bit about how you're thinking about what you're combining. So we're just mixing this up a bit now. Yeah. And um, you can see that it's uh, uh, the, the soup has brought a little moisture in. If I didn't have that soup, I'd probably be adding some more moisture myself right now, but it's, um, it's actually brought it to a pretty nice spot. So you can see that. And now, um, I was mentioning before that I'll use uh, egg as a binder. So we're going to add that in. I go ahead and add in two eggs today. And there are other recipes, as I was saying, I, this will be the first of a bunch of burger recipes. There are other recipes that don't have cheese and eggs that would make a really nice vegan burger. But the one we're making today, uh, we are using cheese and eggs. I'm adding a little bit of salt to this. And I'm going to add some pepper, ground pepper. Okay. And then, want to mix that around by? And now we got to ask ourselves what direction we want to go with any other spices. So. I have lots of choices. We have the curry spices, Violet, from Curio Spices. You know the curry that we use for the um, ketchup? Yeah. Super yummy. Yeah. So we have that one. That's one choice. We have another choice, which is um, we could do, um, well, we could do some herbs. You know, it might be really yummy with lovage from the garden or chives. Yeah. Uh, another yeah. choice, uh, we could do, like, uh, I have that, um, cumin, um, I have this spice from the, that I used for making the chili the other night. It has sesame seeds and uh, peppers and that would be yummy too. Yeah. This one, remember? Yeah. What do you think you'd like to try in the burgers today? Um, hmm. uh, maybe the ones we use for the ketchup, I think that would be. Okay. Do you know what that one's like? Do you know how to find it? Yes. All right, so in fact, Violet, we could just use the remainder of the ketchup, or do you want to use that kind of ketchup on the burger, too? I, I do like the idea of it. What Violet has there is curry, and I think curry cauliflower, curry and cauliflower are a really good combination, so I bet that's going to be delicious. I think we could use both, and I think we okay. could put this in there. And then do the ketchup that way? Yeah. So we have a little trick we do at home. We'll take some ketchup and we'll put some curry powder in and mix it around. And this is something I, um, I saw at an awesome restaurant in London. And it's really, really yummy and it's the easiest thing in the world. And uh, that's what we were talking about. We have some of that in the fridge. So we've added some curry powder in here. I think that's going to be really, really yummy. Um, we're just going to check on these onions back here. Oh, and you may have noticed um, we have some buns. I didn't go through how to make these specifically, but I used the, um, uh, we've been avoiding going to the store as much as we can, and so I made burger buns for today, and I made these out of the um, bread recipe, uh, Richard's bread recipe, so if you go back and watch some previous episodes, you'll see how to make the dough, and in those episodes we were making loaves of bread, but you can use the same dough to make those buns if you want to. Um, yeah, we've done a good job using up some of these different uh, ingredients. Now, we're going to manage the, the flavor of this, so I'm adding a little bit of this um, soy sauce, uh, which I think will be a really yummy flavor in there. Um, you could, uh, other things you might play around with at this point is like mushroom powder, uh, nutritional yeast, um, uh, you may, you could even add a little bouillon at this point, I think just things that you can um, play around with, uh, marmite I've added sometimes, like um, things that bring a little extra flavor into it are a good idea. And you'll see like this is pretty wet. Um, that's, it's got a lot of binder in it, but it's pretty wet. That's an important part of making the veggie burger work in my mind because you want it to be pretty wet so you can cook it for a while and then you can create some crust and you can have some difference in textures. If you, don't, if you have it too dry, you never really get to that point where you're cooking. 
And now I'm going to taste it just as it is because you really want this to taste delicious at this point before you cook it. You want to taste it? Yeah, it really is. Valid. You nailed it. It's really under. Is it really good? It's like a little bit salty. It's got some nice crunchiness to it. That came from the seeds we put in there. Um, it has the cumin flavor. It has the pickles in it. The pickles bring a little bit of texture in there as well. Um, the blue saying he wants a little bit, so I was bring him some. That's sweet. Um, so this is super yummy. I'm actually really happy with where it is. And I don't even feel like it needs. Uh, I was thinking we'd run out to the garden for some herbs, but this is super delicious the way it is. So maybe we'll stop right here and um, and uh, and call this a success. So so this is our uh, mixture, and um, like I said, it's pretty wet, um, and that's okay. And uh, the moisture in this case came a lot from that soup we used. But if you didn't have that soup you're using, you could have added the moisture in a different way. Uh, we've seasoned it and we've tasted it to make sure like it tastes really yummy. And so this is, um, this is ready to go. It's ready to go on the griddle. Um, all right. So I'm going to um, get this out of my way. All right, we're gonna make a little room here. Push some of these onions to the back. And, and what we're going to do now is take some take some of this. We have clean hands. Um, take some of this, and you're going to just shape it in your in your hand. Uh, and I like a I like a pretty wet mixture, as I was saying. I think that helps you get the textures you want. And I like to shape it as about that size. I have a pretty big hand. You want to see how big it looks in Violet's hand? So you can see there. I like to make it about that size. This is something that can be up to your taste. You can make this a very different size burger. And I'm just gonna push it down just slightly once it hits. I, that's gonna get me the final shape that I want. So this is the shape I'm going for. And you, know, you may base that a little bit on the bun you have. You know, that's a nice size for this bun. But you might shape that a little differently if you've got a different bun you're aiming for. So we're gonna make up a couple of these and just get them on the griddle. Cause like I said, this will be our dinner tonight. So just making that shape right there, and then I'm going to put that down on the griddle and then just pat it slightly to flatten it out just a little bit. Yes. Yeah. You got it there? So, um, you know, just to reiterate some of the things I was saying before, uh, most veggie burgers I've ever had are lousy, like really bad, especially in restaurants. They're just terrible. And, but it doesn't have to be that way. It took me a while to figure out how to make a veggie burger that tasted really yummy. Uh, but you can have a really, really delicious veggie burger. Like what we're aiming for here is something that's so good. After you have a bite, you really, really want another bite. And, um, and that's, that's, uh, that's what we're making here. Um, this is not for the grill. So just to reiterate that, if you want to do the grill, what I would suggest is you cook it on the griddle first once it's fully formed, you could heat it up on the, on the grill. And this is also not a replacement for a beef patty. Um, nobody's going to think this is a beef burger. I'm not fooling anybody. It's not like what we're even trying to do at all. Um, it's really yummy in and of itself, but it's not a beef style burger. Um, and that's fine. I think it's like we should all be able to celebrate it for what it is. And if you really want something that's you know, if you're missing a beef burger and you eat because you're a vegetarian or vegan, or if you you eat meat but you're trying to cut down, but you really want that beefy burger, I would suggest getting Impossible Burger. Um, but uh, but that's not what this is. This is a way to use to bring a bunch of vegetables into your diet and really yummy vegetables. Right now we've got beets, we have uh, radishes in here, we have onions. Um, we're going to put on top of it. We have cauliflower that we've brought in there. Um, and we have some really beautiful pumpkin seeds that we found that found their way in there. Um, we have some whole grain uh, bread that we used um, the crumb to bring it together, and uh, it's going to be a really really yummy burger. Um, the kids love eating these, um, and that's part of why we make extras and put them in the fridge. 
Uh, our dogs actually really love eating these. <laughs> like, there's, there's, there's almost nothing that Tulip likes better than like a, a, a veggie burger. Um, so they are also big consumers of these after the fact. You can see our onions um, grilling away really nicely right there. I'm gonna um, take a little peek. So this is this is still not even close, but a lot of times we will let these cook for about eight minutes on the first side. So this is like, um, I wanna create a crust and a difference in texture. Yeah. I think you should like flatten it a little more. It's kind yeah. of... It's really good. It will, it will flatten when I turn it over. You'll see. Um, all right, Violet was concerned we didn't have it flattened enough, but we're actually a-okay. There's something else we can do while this is working, and that is we can make like a special sauce. Um, this is something uh, I'm not sure if everybody knows. Yeah, I was looking for a little jar, but I can't find one. You know what? We have some that we just cleaned out, so maybe I can just wash some of this uh, beef juice out of one of these. So. Um, I don't know if everybody knows this, but like if you're if you're enjoying a burger at a fast food place, it probably has some sort of a pinkish, salmon colored sauce on it, and um, that's basically um, not that different than like a Thousand Island dressing uh, or French dressing, depending on how it's made. And you can make these kinds of special sauces at home too. Um, it's really not complicated at all. What we're going to do is I'm going to get some mayonnaise. Get some mayonnaise and we get some ketchup. All right, and um, do we have relish or are we out of relish? I don't think we have. Don't think we have any. I thought we did, but maybe this all gone. So you can do. Um, yeah, relish is really yummy. Um, so what we're going to do is do mayonnaise here, and you could do just mayo, or you could do some other plant-based mayo, um, or you could do, I think this is Hellman's. Uh, and then you can go ahead and um, add ketchup to this. Yep, it's sort of crazy. You want to mix that up? All right, go ahead and mix that up. I'm going to see if we have any relish in here. Cover. I really do like relish. It might be that we don't, though. What's that? I don't think we have any. You don't think we have it? No. Um, well, in that case, maybe we'll just add some sweet French butter pickles in there. What do you think of that idea? Because um, relish is sort of just sweet, sweet French butter pickles chopped up, right? In like a sugary sauce. Um, We are still in the COVID period, so we're avoiding going out more than we have to. And we have some things, I think normally we would probably have just mayo, but we get that at Whole Foods, and we haven't been at Whole Foods forever, so uh, we have our, our uh, Hellman's mayonnaise instead here today. We actually have a giant thing. Yeah, we do We do have one we have broken into yet. Lose right. Um, all right, so I'm gonna come under this burger to try to check it out. And you can see it's starting to develop a little crust on there. Um, I think they're not quite cooked through on that first side, but they're getting to where, what I'm aiming for. And so I'll, I just I'm, I flipped that one because I wanted to see what it's like. We'll let the other ones go a little bit longer. Um, check our onions back here. It's starting to look really yummy. Look at that, yum. And then. How's our special sauce looking there, by? And now, when you're making this yourself at home, you can use whatever ingredients you want, but you can also play around with it any way you want. I'm going to add a little bit of smoked paprika um, to this, which will bring a little um, different dimension of flavor in there. It'll be really yummy. And there really wasn't much to that. We'll just leave these out because some people might want them on the burgers. You want to taste what it tastes like, guys? See if you like it. I'll get you a little spoon. Let me give it a good stir in there. You're not sure about the paprika? You're going to love it. You are, trust me. I'm not sure about the paprika. I'm not sure about how many mayonnaise Oh, how much mayonnaise is in it? Alright, I think you're going to love it. Here, give it a little taste.
What do you think? Well, you're going to have to decide if you want out of your burger or not. I think you might decide yes? Yeah. All right. So um, I'm going to check back in on these and um, take this one off the griddle and flip it. That's looking really nice. So, so there's a bit of a crust that developed there, which I really wanted, and it's firming up nicely. But these, like I said before, these take a little while to cook, and um, and that's okay. Like that's uh, that's actually it's actually fine. And then there we go. And a biologist clean her spoon. Now she's giving blue a little taste. It's really sweet. Um, it's really generous of you to think your brother's mine. Um, all right, so we've got the burgers cooking now. They're almost done. We've got our special sauce. Um, let's get ready to make one of these. And um, when I'm cutting a bun like this, um, these don't have a really big crust, but they have a little bit of a crust. So I'm just going to hold my hand up so I'm not going to put it in the path of cutting. And, um, and I think that um, I'm a really big fan of grilling the bun. I'm using a little uh, butter substitute, earth balance. So I guess I'm earth, earth balancing the bun, but um, I'm going to take this bun, and it looks really nice. It's like light and spongy. It came out really, really well. That Richard's, um, Richard's recipe is awesome. And so I'm just putting some butter on this, and I'm going to make some room for it on the griddle. Well, you're doing an awesome job as cameraman. Thanks for helping with us today. Alright, I'm just going to make a little bit of room back there, and I'm going to go ahead and pop the buns, pop that bun on the griddle. Um, this is like personal preference, I know not everybody prefers this, but I think it's um, really yummy when that burger bun warms up a little bit and has just a lightest little bit of crunch um, where it toasts up. So we're going to get that ready there. You get, you're starting to feel hungry a little bit? Yeah. What should we have with our burgers today? Should we have, um, uh, like, should we fry some potatoes or make wedges or something like that? Um, I think fry some potatoes. You think so? Some yeah. french fries? Yeah. Yes, right. french fries. Well, we probably won't make french fries on the show today. We'll save that for a future episode, but, um, but that french fries go really nicely with, uh, with the burgers. It smells good. Um, thanks, Clementine. How you doing, sweetie? Okay. Um, we are, yeah, look at them. They look really beautiful, huh? Uh -huh. Violet picked a really fun burger to, to make today. Okay. And so I can let that go in another few minutes. Yes. Um, Violet, uh, Violet made these with um, uh, beets and cauliflower and curry powder. Yum. It's really good. Uh, so we're just waiting for the burger to finish cooking, and uh, it's looking pretty good to me. And these are really yummy after you've cooked them. You can eat them when they're warm, uh, or you can let the burger, um, or you can let the burger uh, uh, cool, and they're still they're yummy. They're even good out of the refrigerator. Um, and then there's lots of ways to assemble burgers. So at this point, like have fun. Um, you know, do what you like to do or what your family likes to do. Uh, I think for this one, I'm going to put a little bit of that special sauce on there. And then I'm going to put um, the burger. And I'm going to put some of these onions on top of that. Um, if you wanted to do a cheeseburger, you could put some cheese on it. I'm not doing that in this case because I think there's already some nice cheese on it. Um, and I love pickles. So we're gonna have like, we have pickled vegetables in there and we're gonna have some pickles on top of it too. And add like a little bit of lettuce, um, like a little bit of lettuce on there as well. It's, <laughs> it's like a roly poly lettuce, huh? It's like a little roly lettuce. Um, and there we go. And the, the bun is like nice and soft, it's warm, it's really beautiful. And this is a veggie burger. And 
As the patty cools, it'll firm up a little more than it is right now, but I'm gonna have a bite of it right away. Mmm. Violet. You might have to write down that recipe. It's super yummy. A little bit hot, but really yummy. You got it? Mm. Nice job. So that's veggie burger number one. So we will um, we'll return to the idea of veggie burgers again and do some vegan veggie burgers, some bean based, and some uh, grain based veggie burgers. But that is it for today. Thank you for joining In Air's Kitchen. We are in the process of getting ready to start Clover back up, which is really exciting. We're going to do pantry boxes starting um, the first week of June. So we'll announce that on the website and everything. Um, everybody can follow up with us and at a later date we'll open up the restaurants themselves. But I'm going to be a little busier lately, but we're going to keep doing this show live two days a week. Um, we're going to do it live on Mondays and live on Thursdays. Thank you so much for